Why don't you just make 10 louder and make 10 be the top number and make that a little louder? These go to 11. So what's the background? Are those your horses? Yes, those are my horses, but I'm not there. It's a picture. But, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's already dark outside here in Germany right now. And, uh, <laughs> right. It's my horses. It's uh, on my little rider retreat ranch. Yes. Nice. So is that something that, uh, you know, as the band winds down, you're going to spend more time doing that, I imagine, huh? Oh, yes, yes, yes. I mean, uh, I'm, uh, in my other life, I'm a psychotherapist and a coach. Oh. And uh, so these horses are uh, healing horses. So I'm working with my clients, with the horses, uh, to give them power. And uh, yes, uh, horses can be like a mirror. So uh, 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 about the things in your inner soul, they are fantastic right. for that. And uh, yes, uh, this is the thing I'm doing. And um, yes, wow. I will spend more time in the nature after end of 2023. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So out of curiosity, because I had no idea you were a psychotherapist. So how long have you been a, a, in that profession, in that field? Um, I'm working since 30 years in that field. Mm, and I already started up when I was really young because my um, when I was 15, I had my first experiences in that because my father was a soccer uh, coach. And uh, so I was a co co coach. <laughs> so, oh wow! Okay. Uh, and um, I worked with the little guys. With the, um, also my brother was in that uh, uh, company, and uh, so uh, I I was a trainer for these little kids. Um, so uh, that they got into a relaxing feeling. Uh, I did hypnotics. Uh, I learned that really early, and so I was. Uh, already in my young years uh, that mm -hmm. was my kind of life and uh, yes and wow. since 30 years i'm working um really with my clients in that yes <laughs> wow amazing so sabina you 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 balance that but then also holy moses so how did the, how do you make that work uh, i mean um it fits good together because it was holy moses i could put out all, all my feelings uh it's really good to do heavy metal because i think Metal is making you lucky because uh, you can put down with all mm -hmm. the moves, uh, right. everything what is in each cell. So if you're aggressive or not in a good mood, I think uh, heavy metal can keep your life going and uh, you are getting a lot of energy. And as a vocalist standing on stage, I always say I'm getting a lot of energy from the fans and I can give a lot of energy. And so is that what I do with my clients also though so, uh to push them uh and to come in a more energy doing what you need to do look at your visions and uh follow your dreams and uh this mm -hmm. is what i was holy moses yes <laughs> oh wow hey what kind of reaction do you get from your clients when they find out that you have this other life <laughs> this is sometimes funny really yeah i'm sure um, <laughs> because like no uh, um since uh, all the social medias and everything, everybody can get all information about you in, in right. the internet, yeah. And they are sometimes wondering because here in my life as a psychotherapist, I'm sure really down and there's wow, it's everything is right. quiet and sure. And I say, oh my God, Sabina, and what kind of voice? Because they know my other voice, right, right. <laughs> I'm talking and um. Sometimes they are shocked, but uh, most of them, they really say, oh, my God, uh, to follow all the dreams together. So uh, this is kind of you are kind of idle. So um, and uh, I want to do it also. And I said, OK, take your things and yeah, get the energy and then help you to come into your body. Look into your deeper selves. What what there is an inner voice always what is saying to mm -hmm. you what you should do. And uh, yes, uh, but sometimes they're, uh, oh my God. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Yeah, that's like the complete opposite, right? Of what yes. they see you as. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. So you have a, a, a new album. It sounds like it's the last album from the band Invisible Queen, and that's coming out, uh, well, the 14th. So that's like in a couple of days here in the U.S. Tomorrow, 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 tomorrow in the U.S. I don't know about your, 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 uh, 
part of the uh, planet. But uh, going into that record, I mean, when you started writing and putting material together for it, I mean, was it with the idea that this was going to be it? And what kind of pressure did that put on you and the band, knowing that this is going to be the final recording? Okay, first, yes, we uh, we were knowing that this is the last album where we started mm -hmm. up to... Uh, but, okay, when we did the first riffs uh, back in 15, 16, um, mm -hmm. that was not totally clear. But right. uh, since 2020, because we, we sought first to um, to release the last album in 21. But mm -hmm. then, you know, this uh, yeah. strange chorus came right. over. This right. Way. And yeah. all our ideas, because that was a 40 years anniversary of the band. Mm -hmm. And we said, okay, we want to stop. But, okay, then we... we we stopped and we, we were writing more stuff, but it was not a pressure because um, we said um, one thing is clear, Hall and Moses never followed any trends or did any compromises. We mm -hmm. always did in all this 43 years of Holy Moses what we wanted to do. And I think this was important. So we were not thinking, so we were not using our heads. We were using our soul and mm -hmm. uh, we were writing and said, we do the best what we can do. And um, that right. will be the result. And um, I think this helped us a lot, uh, not coming into a pressure. Uh, so um, we said, hey, the people can like it or they can hate it, but we want to do what we want to do. And um, yes, and so that makes it a little bit easier. Yes. <laughs> okay. Okay. Wow. It, it, did you guys have extra material left over that you guys have in the vaults or archives or anything like that? And if so, what, what do you plan on doing with that stuff? Box set? Um, no, we <laughs> yes. Uh, yes, I mean, uh, maybe you know that it is a double CD. Yes, it is. Go. I was going to ask you about that. Yeah. 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 And uh, so, no, we have no other material. Okay. I think we, we did sometimes uh, some cover songs or so, but uh, mm -hmm. Uh, more our idea is, I mean, uh, we are playing the final rain tour right now and mm -hmm. uh, we we'll record stuff on uh, on the live shows and uh, everybody, ask, ask, uh, please, uh, you never release the DVD, you never mm -hmm. release the album. And I think now with the last tour, um, I think we have uh, to follow sure. uh, the dreams of the fans uh, to record something uh, what we can release after the end of the band so next year uh as dvd and live shows yes <laughs> now yeah i was going to ask you about that because i think you you had already scheduled your very last live performance and i imagine that's probably going to be recorded to you know some degree whether it's audio and or video um so i was going to ask you about that and 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 uh, you know being that you guys aren't a band that has done a lot of that or any of that you know um what kind of pressure is that for you guys to kind of, uh, you know, uh, deliver the goods, <laughs> you know, for those that, that are asking for that kind of a content? Um, so I, I think I, I would try. Um, I mean, I, I, I you, you are right. It, it's a kind of pressure, but more. Uh, I know that the people are looking really forward for this final rain tour. Mm -hmm. and it's a kind of pressure um, that you have to be really on each show really doing the best with all your energy. And um, I think more, m m mostly uh, I'm only a little bit in fear about the sound situations or so, especially right. on festivals. Mm -hmm. uh, if we only have like a 20 minutes curfew or something like that and sure. a lot of other bands playing. So this makes me always a little bit mm -hmm. nervous that everything is really on the point ready and then making a good show. And uh, yeah, this is, um, yeah, especially with all the techniques today. Um, right. Yeah. yeah, no kidding. And and I was going to touch on what you had said. It is a double record. The You know, I think the limited edition has the bonus disc with the uh, special guests, the the uh, Invin In Invincible Friends, I think. And most notably, Bobby Blitz from from Overkill, who a lot of the North American fans know. And then and then one of that I'm really excited was seeing Diva Satanica, you know, uh, sharing vocal duties. Uh, tell me a little bit about how that came about as far as the second disc and then some of the guests on it yeah okay first our idea was like um asking our good friends uh which are following us and we we did the career together uh as uh, backing vocalists 
But mm -hmm. then on one rehearsal, I don't know, I think we had a beer too much or whatever. <laughs> uh, um, we said, why they could not sing a whole song? So we sent them out um, all the uh, tracks with my vocals and said, okay, you can choose a song, what you like to sing. Uh, you can change lyrics, whatever you want. You can do it in your own style. And so we asked 12 our best friends. So mm -hmm. uh, Bobby from Overkill, I know since 86. So mm -hmm. uh, they are found at the same time like Holy Moses uh, in 1980. Tom Angel Ripper from Sodom, a longtime friend since 86. Um, Gary from Tankard. And mm -hmm. uh, for example, also Jens from Sugar. Yeah. Um, yes, uh, we met Jens when we played in Sweden, and uh, he told us that uh, Miss Sugar is a lot influenced by Holy Moses, and we were like, "Oh my God, we didn't know oh, that!" Wow. Right, right. But, um, <laughs> like Diva Satanica, um, I invited some of the other girls in the scene, and especially girls which are not singing with this kind of gurgle technique, mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. really girls which sing like me, like. Yeah, from the stomach, from 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 the whole body, mm -hmm. and with Divas da Sa Satanica, for example, I have a little nice story because it's about seven years ago when uh, we played with Holy Moses in Spain, and the little chai girl came backstage and gave me a bloodhound uh, bloodhound uh, t shirt from her band. Oh yeah, said, yeah, yeah. Hey, Sabina, um, I like to sing with you tonight. Um, I, I know the song to drunk to fuck. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I said, okay. And she was she she was a really nice voice and mm -hmm. little girl and shy. And then she came on, on stage and was singing with me together and she was blowing me away. I was like, oh, oh wow. my God, wow. And uh, so since that time, we are also friends. And she said always, hey, Sabina, you are my grandmother of friends. Oh, wow. Nice. Nice. <laughs> and, yes. But I think with her, it was so nice from her. And uh, so I asked her to sing. And yes, yeah, so we have a lot of guests, like 12 guests all, to all together. And everybody's singing another song. And this is a double CD. Yeah. So, yeah, that's a, so you go back with her about seven years. Then it sounds like you've you've known her for a little bit. Yes, yes, I know her for a long time. Yes. Yeah. Wow. That just in her beginning. Yeah. So, is this really the end? I mean, as you know, there's a lot of bands that say, "Hey, we're done," and then they come back. Is there a point where Sabina will be out there riding her horses in the pasture and go, "You know, it's almost the fiftieth anniversary of Holy Moses. I'm going to reform the band. We're going to do a short run, maybe do another studio record or something like that." Do you think that's possible? No. No. I can, no. No. Okay. Because I um, decided it really um, because, okay, I'm going this in the end of this year 60. Mm -hmm. and, um, I said, now I'm in my full energy mm -hmm. with full power to do it. And I want to decide on my own to say this is the end. Uh, you know, from other musicians um, that they are going ill or whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, so um, something else, a third part of right. the universe is right. deciding to stop and this mm -hmm. is what i do do not want and like you see and we talked before i have a lot of other things what i like to do and um i mean this is uh it's it it's a real pressure what i can tell you to have a band and i mean holy moses songs are not easy they right. are really fast really technical and you have to be really on the point that this is everything is great and you have to rehearse mm -hmm. a lot. And um, so I don't, I said to myself, I don't want to do it like a chewing gum. Yes, I, mm. I can put it like a chewing gum. Right. I can four or five more years, but mm -hmm. what is the end? So when should I end? And now I said, right. I will end with the band uh, because I'm so thankful about everything because we started as a school band from our high school mm. and we never expected to do this for 43 fucking years. Yeah, right. We're right. touring all over the world, making 13 albums. Uh, I only can be thankful. And uh, so I said, I want to be thankful and stop it in the right moment. Nice. Okay. Um, I get it. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah, respectable. And, yeah, That's really I, respectable. Yeah. yeah. 
on the other hand, what I have to say really is I can understand other musicians which are only have this music and no other jobs or mm-hmm. other business in their life. Right. And if they say, okay, we stop. And then after one, two years, three years, they're coming into a kind of depressive or the money is running out. Mm-hmm. And they're coming back because they see they have no other chance uh, right. because they needed so much for their lives. And I can understand that. So I would never say, oh my God, they said they stopped it. And they coming back. I can understand if somebody is doing that, yeah. And uh, but for me, I know it's good for me to stop now in right. the end of the year. And the last show will really on my birthday. So oh, our okay. last show will on on the twenty seventh twenty seventh of December, right? It's the sixties birthday and the last show. So wow. it's, it's the best moment to do a real big party with all over our fans from all over the world. And no, yeah. The fans are buying tickets from all over the world, and I think it will be a really great party. Well, there's no doubt you have to record it now. Yes, you know? yeah. <laughs> so, uh, how much, how much um, uh, touring did the band do in North America? No, nothing. Nothing. And is that something that you might have a little bit of like uh, regret, or you missed out on, or feel like you missed out on? And if so, uh, give me your thoughts on that. Yeah, this is what I really missed. And I cannot understand that n- never a promoter invited us. So I know we have a lot of fans mm-hmm. in South America. Right. And um, uh, the only things when we stopped in, in the States were like when we were going to the 70,000 tons of metal or okay. we did the barge to hell. So this kind of cruises. Um, but uh, that was always a chance uh, to stay in the country and uh, touring. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't know. I mean, I visited the country so oftentimes a lot with, mm-hmm. and, uh, uh, but I can't understand. And, uh, but right now, uh, there is no offers or not for the final rain tour, mm-hmm. uh, not even a festival or something. So, right. uh, I know now we have, uh, or the people asking for do, I think we will do one or two shows in South America. Somebody mm-hmm. is working on it. And uh, but all the rest will be here in uh, in Europe. Yes. Mm, OK. OK. What was it like for you, you know, when you first went into like a record shop and you saw your music in in the music bin, you know, the LP or the cassette or whatever it might have been? What was that like for you? It was unbelievable. And I could not believe it, really. I remember when the Queen of Siam album came out, um, I went to this local record store, a little one, mm-hmm. and they had really this album there. And um, I looked at that, and to realize that that is true, I bought the vinyl. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah, and I came home, and I still have the sticker on this Queen okay. of Siam album with surprise and everything. Right. And and the bill for it is still in the cover. Oh wow! <laughs> yes. So okay, so real old school because I, I I used to do that too, where I'd buy something and I'd slip the 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 bill in there so you have it right. That's cool. Yeah. Oh nice. Now Holy Moses again, thrash metal pioneers. Uh, yourself, you know, a, a a pioneer and a role model. I think for women that are into heavy music and stuff. Um, would you agree that you had a, a, a an influence in a lot of these uh, metallic death metal female vocalists? Yeah, I think so. I mean, people told me now a lot of times that um, they did um, they recognize that I I was really the first one, and um, mm-hmm. so I think I, I influenced and uh, making maybe. Um, a start in the scene for that. Uh, so, uh, because when I started up, I I didn't know anybody singing like that. So, right, right. Yeah, I could not believe that this will be in any way successful. Or so I always thought. Oh my God, nobody's singing like that. Not yeah, even right. male singers. So yeah, I was really happy when I had the first uh, when I was listening to Venom or Possess or the early mm-hmm. Slayer said okay other ones are also in this deep voices huh? i was yeah. knowing nothing about that before <laughs> <laughs> over the years i mean what what have you done to kind of preserve the vocal 
you know, the, and, and keep it in top notch form? I think, um, I live really healthy. I am a lot in the nature and, mm. um, yeah, I take no drugs or only sometimes a little bit of alcohol, but not sure much. Yes. All these things. I, um, and I think the most important thing is, uh, to be lucky. Yeah. And, um, mm -hmm. Feel the freedom and of the nature and everything, and doing a lot of sports. Uh, I mean, anyway, because um, these horses, uh, we have to do a lot of work with these horses. So I'm running <laughs> and uh, to, to make everything fine there. And uh, so, um, yes, and I'm only looking that, um, yeah, yeah, take care. Yeah, on, right. On, on my body, I think this is this is a, a whole system. Yeah. And when this whole system is working, then also that is the voice is working. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. No, that makes total sense. Yourself. I mean, uh, you know, I'm sure you had people you looked up to as far as musicians and stuff like that growing up or throughout your career. Who was the first famous person that you looked up to that you met? And what was that experience like? Okay. The first one. I met. I looked up was Pele from. Uh, oh, Soccer okay. Ball. Yeah, yeah, yes. right. Uh, because oh, wow. he was uh, also in a. Uh, he was a really nice person. He was uh, such a rock star, and I was in his soccer camp in New oh. Jersey. Okay. Uh, I was fifteen, and he had with Franz Beckenbauer and Pele had a soccer camp because they were oh, both wow. at Cosmos New York, um, and um, I think this was a person. Uh, he was really nice. Down to earth, he was singing with us kids and his guitar uh, in the soccer camp. Oh, and wow. uh, yes, um, he impressed me a lot. And um, and then musically and in, mm -hmm. in, in the music scene, um, it was a totally different part. Uh, I mean, I'm a huge Ozzy Osbourne Black Sabbath fan. <laughs> okay. Uh, I mean, he is not uh, the, such an idol because he took a lot of alcohol and drugs. <laughs> like right, right. Lemmy and I all also love Lemmy. Sure. And um, yes, this is a person's, uh, yeah, um, which are on the music side. Uh, when I started up, this was my idols. Yes. Oh, nice. Okay. As far as things go, I mean, have you, over the course of your career, I'm sure you've had some kind of stage mishaps where things didn't go quite well. I mean, is there a particular story that stands out of when something didn't go right on stage and it, you know, resulted in this memorable moment for you for whatever reason? Um, I remember one thing that just right now, because we talked before about techniques. I mean, I'm old school and mm -hmm. I love to have uh, the normal monitors in front of me. And that was the first time we checked out this in-ear things. I mean, oh, right. it's good to have everything because you can hear everything. Right. But um, these um, earplugs, they, after the first hat banging from the first yeah. song, far from one side, oh, no. the air, and then this uh, thing, uh, the pack. Of, the, uh, <laughs> and and then I had to 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 show with my fingers the guy on stage. Please open the monitors for me. Mm -hmm. he didn't check that, so I was singing oh. three songs with only I had the drum oh, and wow. the little noise of the guitars. And I couldn't hear my vocals only from the PA and also the guitar and everything was so a little bit oh, wow. in, in a time different, but right. drummer. And I was only looking at him because I know the songs only from the drumming. Silence. Yeah, right. It was like three songs. I had oh, to no. sing like that. And I was oh. like, my God, that was real. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that sounds like a nightmare, right? You probably relive that nightmare. over and over a few times. Wow. <laughs> Hey, listen, thank you for your time. I got one more question before I cut you loose, but we're going to plug the record. We're going to plug the band. And thank you for talking to We Go to 11. We'll get this online, get it to the PR folks, and wish you nothing but the best in, in retirement uh, going forward. But before we let you go, what's any parting words you may have to the North American fans? Uh, yes. I have to say, sorry, sorry, sorry. 
that we never played in North America. Um, I I'm really it's 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 really bad, and this is something what I'm missing in my career. But I know that I have a lot of fans there, and I thank you so much for supporting Holy Moses for the 43 years. Uh, and we never played there. It's not on the band. We right. look like to do, right. yes. But I thank you all that you are behind the band. And maybe, you know, the flights are going also from North America to Germany. Oh, there and you go. You want to come and follow me on, on my 60th birthday and having the party together. It's December the 27th, and maybe you have holiday. And yeah, there you go. Hamburg. It's a wonderful city. <laughs> there you go. They, they could be like a vacation slash celebration too, right? That's perfect. <laughs> hey, thank you for your time. It's been a blast. And, uh, you know, we could always buy the, the DVD and or if you guys do any kind of streaming performances as well. So yes, uh, maybe we yeah. can organize that. That's a great idea, man. Yes. Yeah. yeah. All ask- right. To organization. Yeah, no yeah. kidding. Hey, thank you so much. We'll get this online, get everybody links, and hope to talk to you again, uh, you know, maybe before this all ends. Okay, great. All right. Thank Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you for your time. Bye. Bye.